welcome back to Patty Star Supernatural Chronicles. And do I have a great story for you guys tonight. Now, this particular investigation uh, occurred in Lexington in the year 2002. Um, there was a lot of history to this particular place that we're going. And um, just as a case study, because I knew I'd want to do several investigations there, we refer to it as the Bishop House. Now, um, I was contacted by a, a gentleman. Um, he told me that he had just um, bought a, an apartment building with several apartments. And uh, he started getting a lot of complaints. Uh, actually, some of the tenants thought that maybe he was coming in to their apartments while they were at work because so many weird things kept happening. Um, and then he would listen to their stories and he thought, you know, maybe I should find out about this old place. He didn't really know the history of it when he bought it and he started looking into it. And it had quite a dark history. Now, the reason that we called it the Bishop House is because he explained to us at one time, it's where uh, the bishop and his wife lived many years ago, I think in the very late 1800s. And um, it, it, the story sort of goes, and I got this from the owner, the story sort of goes that um, they uh, didn't have children and they decided to foster a child, maybe adopt a child, I'm not quite sure how that went, but there was a child involved. And um, she was quite a handful. She was about five or six years old, quite a handful. So they decided to get a nanny that would help with her. Um, it seems like she was a little bit of a, she had uh, some problems, kind of a troubled child. And then uh, he said that later on he found out that supposedly the little girl disappeared. And so all these stories started cropping up. And one story that he found very interesting is that the nanny took the little girl down into the basement where there's a well, and we did get to see where that well was, and she drowned the little girl. Um, and then as the owner continued to investigate this property, he found out that after the bishop left, there were several other owners that had owned this house. And that in right around 1970s, it became vacant and, um, and abandoned, sort of. And then uh, it became like a place for homeless and, and uh, people that took drugs would meet there. And they would also meet with their dealer there. Um, and uh, get stoned, whatever. That went on for uh, several years. Then there was this man from Texas came to Lexington. He saw this place, looked it up, tried to find out who owned it, made a deal and bought the what I refer to as the Bishop House. When he uh, got a hold of the house, he uh, fixed it up. Um, he turned it into apartment buildings or segments so that he could rent it out to people. And uh, But this guy happened to turn out to be like a serial killer from Texas. And uh, he would lure some of the drug uh, addicts that used to come there. He would lure them back in. Uh, they, th they were thinking they were going to get drugs. And then down in the, he would get them down into the basement where he would torture and kill them. Now, I'm not exactly sure how they finally caught this guy, but they did. And uh, they actually had to send him back to Texas because he had a, a bigger count of deaths, I think, in Texas. Where he, uh, whereas of 2002, when I went to look up his name, he was still serving a sentence um, at that time. So he's, he got to thinking about this and he thought, you know, maybe all of this thing, these things that are happening to my tenants, them thinking I'm breaking in, things are getting moved, candles were being lit while the people were at work and uh, they'd come home and their uh, water would be on in the kitchen, in the bathroom, and they would just be really upset, but I would too. 
So um, he gave me a call. And uh, I decided to round up some of my students and friends. And let me tell you a friend that I did invite. And uh, this was um, basically our first physical meeting. You see, I don't know if you've ever heard of Chip Coffey. He's a world-renowned psychic medium. He is now currently a cast member of the Kindred Spirits that's on the tra uh, Travel Channel. Um, but he has so much more accomplishments than just that. And his website is chipcoffee, C-O-F-F-E-Y dot com. Check it out. Um, he has a very, very uh, impressive background uh, in dealing with the uh, supernatural, paranormal, and that type of thing. But anyway, this was our first meeting. He had found me uh, surfing the net. And um, he noticed that I was from a small town that he used to live in. And of course, our paths never crossed at that time, but he contacted me and uh, told me a little bit about himself. And I asked him, I said, have you ever been on a ghost investigation? And he said, well, no, but I, you know, I've been very curious. He, at that time, he was telling me that he was a psychic medium and he did readings and things, but he'd never actually been on a ghost investigation. So I told him, I said, well, then you need to come to Lexington. He was coming from Georgia. I said, you need to come to Texas. I mean, Le Lexington, I'll get that right. And you can stay with me, and I'll take you on your very first ghost investigation. And of all places, this was the place that I took Chip Coffee. Um, so he arrives, and I uh, get together with some of my former students that had graduated and been certified as ghost hunters. And I think there were about eight of us, and we took off to see uh, this uh, house. Like I said, that we had because we were going to make it a case study. We called it the Bishop House. Now here is a picture of the Bishop House. Now, if you'll notice, it's kind of dark, but when we took these pictures, we were pretty excited about getting these different orbs. See, back then there was not a controversy over orbs because it was 2002, and there was nothing on TV at that time about ghost hunting and orbs and vortexes and things of that nature. And we were thinking that all orbs, which um, most of them are contamination in the atmosphere with the reflecting coming back and going into a perfect sphere. But we were able to um, sort of manipulate some of the, the, the spirits into showing themselves, and we really did feel like some of the orbs that we got were maybe more spirit energy. So when you look at the picture, I want you to focus a little bit to the right. And I thought that it was another orb, but when I go in on it, it's a face of a man. Now, I've never seen the face of the serial killer, so I don't know if that would be his face. But now I'm also going to show you a close-up of that picture so you can see the face as well. Now, after we uh, arrived, of course, the first place we wanted to go was down into the basement so that we could check that out. When we got down into the basement and we started walking around, and I'm kind of sharing the story with the students that are there, um, we walked into one segment of the basement and there was something very creepy there. There was an, a medical table, it's called a gynecologist table, um, it was there, and then directly hanging from the ceiling all the way down to the center was a chain. And on the end of the chains was two more link chains. And at the end of those were handcuffs. So we thought, what in the world went on in here? So we're, we're, we're not sure if that was part of... Maybe the, the axe that the uh, serial killer uh, used. We don't know that. But we were very concerned about that. 
Now, one thing that was kind of neat, while we were downstairs walking around, we did feel, uh, especially when Chip and I were talking, we did feel like there might be the spirit of the little girl. We walked around to the well. We did not open it. And uh, so um, as we were going from one room to the other, we went into one room. It was a little dark. Um, all of a sudden, there was a light above, and it just kind of came on. Just for a second, it kind of went, you know, came on. So I looked at the light, and I said, Chip, do you see that? And he looked at it and says, yes. I said, ask questions. See if that's the little girl. And if the light comes back on, we'll take that as a yes. Excellent, excellent. So he just kind of started talking. And at that time, my husband had not even had time to come downstairs, down into the basement with the video camera. And he looks up and he asks a couple of questions and he felt sure he was communicating with the little girl and she was responding with a positive answer, like a yes, she would respond by just making the light come on just a little bit, just a little bit. So while all that's going on, I just happened to keep watching the light. And then I looked at the cord that was kind of hanging down like that, that was connected to the light. And then I looked up where it was stapled to the beams. And then I looked over just a little bit further and the wire was cut in half. There was no electrical connection. So I went over to Chip and I said, excuse me, Chip, let me show you something. And he looked up and I said, follow this line. And then when we got to the end, we saw where that the line had been cut and there was no electricity. So how in the world was that light bulb how did it have the capacity to kind of light up just a little bit when he when she would answer Chip? That was so awesome. So, and we got really, really excited about the fact that this little girl was coming through. So, by this time, my husband now has set up his um, video camera. I've got my regular analog camera. Didn't have a digital back then. I had an analog camera. And so I'm looking at Chip and Chip turns and he says, I'm going to talk to the little girl again. I said, excellent idea. So he starts to talk to her. I said, Chip, get down on your knees like you're at her level. And while you are talking with her, hello, and while you are talking with her, we'll film you. So my husband got him into the focus and I've got a camera. And so I'm like taking snapshots. My husband is filming and Chip is like down on one knee. He's got his hand out and he's kind of talking to the little girl, coaching her to come forward. Did he have a message for, for him? You know, that type of thing. And then um, I, as I was uh, talking with him, I snapped to take a picture, and in in the flash, I noticed that I got the most perfect orb. I saw it with my natural eye because back then I didn't have a digital to where I could look in and and see what I had taken. And when I reviewed my video film, it was so awesome because I'm when my husband was filming, and I'm over here. And in that flash uh, was this wonderful orb that I seen with my natural eye. He actually captured that flash with, um, with the video camera, the flash. So I've used this video for years and years in my class when I would explain to the students, when you're taking pictures, instead of watching the viewfinder, now just realize this is with analog, when you go to snap that picture, look out into the darkness or whatever, because when that flash hits, sometimes you see a shadow person, sometimes you see an apparition, and sometimes with your natural eye, you will see the orb. So um, it was so exciting that my husband Chuck
was able to take that picture and capture what I captured on my uh, camera. So we got a still shot of the perfect round orb as as Chip was talking and then Chuck got the same shot in a video camera. So that was really great for us to come through like that and get both of those on the same media. So right now what I'm going to do is I want you to watch that video of Chip as he was down speaking with the little girl and you'll see me take a picture and in my flash you will see the orb come up. Okay, this is such a hotbed of activity that we couldn't possibly do all that we wanted to do during our investigation uh, and get it all done in one time. So I was very fortunate in being able to talk Chip to come back uh, a few weeks later and we went back and we had a little more ammunition to say um, to be able to figure out what we wanted to ask and if there was a chance that we would maybe uh, pick up some other uh, people that had died there. And uh, so it was kind of cool. We were in the foyer and on a previous investigation that I had where I was uh, communicating with the small child, I learned that I could, uh, what I call digital dowsing with my meter, that I could ask yes or no questions and the meter would go off. So we were working with our meters and we were down in the foyer. Um, and one of the guys on the um, ghost hunt had his cell sensor meter and he was holding it quite still in his hand and we had already swept the place and not gotten anything. And then Chip came down and he wanted to stand in the foyer for a minute just to see if he could pick up anything. We're taking pictures. We didn't really get anything. Uh, you know, taking pictures, of course, you have to realize again, I'm reminding you, we all had the analogs. And so it was a little difficult. Today, we're so spoiled. We've got those digitals, and we can see right away quick if there's a face, an apparition, a shadow, um, any other kind of mist or vortexes that might uh, be captured. But um, all of a sudden, uh, a gentleman standing beside Chip, um, the meter started going off. And uh, so we've got the camera on Chip Coffee, and we're kind of watching him and he's kind of being very uh, still and focused and the meter is going off. And then all of a sudden it's so awesome, but Chip sees the little girl and he just says, oh my gosh. Uh, the little girl is standing right beside the guy with the meter. Now, we did have our cameras on that uh, situation. Unfortunately, we did not pick up anything. But it was really neat to see that, uh, the, that these spirits were coming through and cooperating with us and making uh, these meters go off. So now I have that little clip, and I'd like for you to watch that as well. Okay, so we decide that we want to go upstairs. Uh, there were a couple of uh, people that were coming out of their apartments and they were seeing us and they were saying things like, are you guys the ghost hunters? Because they knew that we were coming in uh, for a second time. And, and some of us would come in my apartment and I'll show you what happened. One lady took us into her apartment 
and um, she was really concerned because she loved to meditate and she had a little area where she would light her candles and then she had a couple throughout the house just for the pleasant smell of the camera uh, of the candles that she would light and she said that um, she would leave the house and of course she would sometimes she would um, blow them out like after her meditation in the morning and then she would fix her meals and you know pack her lunch or whatever and then she'd leave no candles burning and she knows that's a hazard so no candles burning but then when she would get home she would open up the house and all her candles even the one on the back of the toilet they would be lit and she said, to be honest with you, I thought that maybe the owner of the building was coming in. And she got a little upset, you know, and said, what's going on? Are you coming into my apartment? He says, even if I did come into your apartment, I wouldn't light candles. So we stayed in her apartment for a little while and we walked around. And um, I, my battery uh, and my camera went real quick. And so um, I went and knew that at that point I needed to go and uh, uh, recharge it. So I'm talking with uh, a couple of the other ghost hunters that are with me. And you can hear me in the background saying something like I had to recharge for my camera. Something on, on that effect. And um, a little girl's voice. This is a great EVP that I get to share with you guys tonight. A little girl's voice came through, and she says, He's so sorry. I'm sorry, too. You can barely hear the two because I'm talking, but when I played it back, and the only thing that I could figure out is maybe she's saying, He's so sorry, uh, maybe for uh, an act that he did. But then she is saying, that she's so sorry too, knowing that she was probably a difficult child and maybe whatever it is that she feels like he's so sorry for, but she's also sorry. So the relationship could have been that of, uh, uh, you know, he was like an, the adoptive parent, but maybe there was this very um, strained kind of relationship and maybe he was too strict, but then she realized that she was like one of these problem child. I don't know. But I am going to play that EVP for you now. And I'll probably play it a couple of times because I want you to hear. And you can hear the little girl's voice. But again, she says, he's so sorry. I'm sorry too. I'm going to play it for you. My dad's a dog. Recharging. Um, he had a sock. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll Okay, and I'm going to play it again. And you'll be able to hear her say, I, He's so sorry. And I'm sorry too. My dad's a dog. Recharging. Um, he had a sock. So that place was so very interesting to go into. There were, like I said, a lot of activity. And one and the owner came to me and said, Patty, before you, you guys came tonight, I got a phone call from the little girl. And I was like, what? He said that his telephone rang. And um, he went. He answered it. He went, hello, answered it. And he said it was just all static. Just static. And he thought, what? So he hung it up. Okay? And then the phone rings again. So he goes over to the phone. And he says, hello? Hello? And a little girl's voice came up. And she says, can Chloe come out? and play and then it broke and hung up and this really alarmed him because this being our second investigation and we'd already told him that we were picking up a little girl 
Chloe was the name of his little dog that he would take out sometimes in the courtyard and play. And this was the really neat thing. They lived in the attic, so sometimes he would leave the door open and the little dog would go down into the foyer and he would run and bark like there was something there that he was playing with. And that's the exact spot that Chip Coffee saw the little girl. So anyway, we've had our, our, t our good times there. Um, and it proved to be um, extremely busy and active. And we wish we could go back but unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, uh, the, the property has now been sold and it is still being uh, served as an apartment building for other people. And with not, without having that connection, we can't really uh, go back and do any more of these investigations. But it sure was fun while we continued to do so. So I hope you've enjoyed our little story tonight and the videos and the EVP that we were able to capture. And so I hope you will like and subscribe and hit that bell icon. That way we can let you know when we've got some new videos to show you. And I've still, um, I have a huge list. Hopefully I'm going to keep getting these out every week and maybe twice a week. And also I want to tell you guys that in the very near future, we're going to have a podcast. And I'm really looking forward to have that uh, fruition because um, I've already got a list this long of the people that I'm hoping will join me uh, during the podcast. So I'll keep you informed. Thank you very much and good night.